This is the EGR valve. The exhaust gas uh, pushes in here and it's connected through here out this tube right here. This hole goes into either the intake manifold or the surge tank. So the way this thing works is it has this valve underneath. It goes up and down like that. So if you push that valve up, it opens the channel between this hole and this hole. What causes this valve to open is a suction on this tube right here. So if I suck on this tube, you should be able to see that valve open and close. This wire coming out right here is a temperature sensor. It just gives the engine warning light if the temperature in the valve gets too high. I don't think it has any other effect on ECU controls. So what causes the suction on here is this thing. This is the EGR modulator. The tube from the exhaust comes out from this one and goes into the bottom of this one. So that puts a positive pressure on there. This is my uh, cheap ass vacuum generator. I can suck air in and blow air out. And if I plug up this other hole over here, it doesn't make any difference. If I switch sides, it doesn't make any difference. The air is actually going through the filter in the top. And this doesn't matter which way it goes. There's a filter. This filter can get clogged up. This one is uh, not too bad. The top was really dirty, so I just pulled the top layer off. This back together. Put my lid back on. This just pops on. If you put pressure on this hose right here, it blocks the air from the filter and connects these two tubes together. If I blow on this bottom one, I get a vacuum. If I don't plug this hole up right here and blow on the bottom, nothing happens. It just sucks air from the other side. So that's how you test it to make sure it's working good. When exhaust is putting pressure on this, it blocks the air filter and connects the two sides together so any vacuum is passed through here. This side, it doesn't matter which side, this side or this side, goes from here, the top of the EGR valve. So if you get a vacuum, that causes this valve to open. So if you have a lot of exhaust pressure, then this valve opens. If it's hooked up to the car and the engine is idling and you reach over and push this valve up, uh, your engine idle should slow down or even stall out. You reach over and push this up and nothing happens, that means your exhaust port is blocked somewhere. In some situations, if your uh, engine is cold, for example, you don't want exhaust to go into your intake manifold even if you do have exhaust pressure. So in that case, you, the engine needs a way to shut that off. That's where the EGR solenoid valve comes in. The way it works, the vacuum from the modulator hose goes into the top of the EGR solenoid valve. The bottom of the EGR solenoid valve right there is connected to the intake air on the surge tank uh, just above the throttle body. To test this, if I plug up this valve and suck or blow and suck on it, then I get a vacuum. This tube and this tube are connected together but they're not connected to the air filter. So air will go freely through unless you plug up one side. Then hook it up to 12 volts and see if the valve opens to allow air to come in through this little air filter on the top. And when I hook up this side, the valve should open. With 12 volts supplied to the EGR solenoid valve, this bottom 
hole is isolated. If I hook up my I can't push or blow air through that. This is this is closed. The top port I can pull air through or push air out. The top port is now connected to this little thing so the air is going in and out through this air filter and this bottom tube is isolated. If I take the power off now the valve is in the opposite position. The air filter is isolated and these two tubes are connected together. There's one more test you can do to this. If the valve is good, the resistance should measure between 30 and 38 ohms. You see that I had written bad on here and then crossed it out. The first time I did the ohm test on here, it didn't pass. And I thought it was bad, so I was going to throw it out. I did the battery test on it, and it seemed to work. And then I did the resistance test, and then it tested fine. So if it's been uh, disconnected for a really long time, you need to apply some power to it to before you test the resistance. I don't know why. That's about it. That's how the system works.